Hey, welcome. I am an old dog and I am getting ready and closer to retirement. So I thought I'd like to share some of my ideas and thoughts with anybody that is teaching for the first time, teaching chemistry for the first time, maybe both. So with that, let's get started. So here it is. It's the beginning of school. First day of school, bell rings, students are seated. What are you going to do? If you're like me, you might even have dreams ahead of time about the nightmare known as <laughs> the first days of school. Well, let's go over a few things here in this video, and hopefully you'll get some ideas. All right, the kids come, and they're going to sit down. Personally, you don't want them sitting down on their own because they're going to sit you know, next to somebody that they know, and classroom control is another topic that I might do in the future. First thing I would do is I'd get them all up. Get them to the side of the room, use your class list, and literally, yes, put them in alphabetical order. Have them sit down, and then from there, I would go into who I am, my background, and, you know, that the fact that we're going to have fun and we're going to have a great year. Chemistry is an awesome subject, in my opinion, to teach. And then from there, I usually do this thing called nameplates. Real simple. I take index cards, if I can get the big ones, that's even better. Hand it out to every student. I have them fold it in half, give them markers, and they put their first name or the name that they would like to be called. Hopefully it's G-rated. And they go ahead and put it on the, on the name plate. And then I have them open up the other side and I ask them a bunch of questions that I'd like them to answer. Questions like, What's your favorite color? If you got an all expense pay trip to any city in the world, what city would you like to go to? One of my favorites is what's your favorite food at Thanksgiving? Do you have a favorite team that you root for? What's your favorite sport? What's your favorite song? I just come up with them off the top of my head, have, have them answer about eight or so. And the nameplates I'll use over the next couple of days. I will collect them at the end of a period. I will put, put them out the next day so they remember where their seats are. It's a way for me to get their know their names. And ultimately, I collect them and I hold on to them for two reasons. One, sometimes I would like to switch up the seats in the room. So before class, maybe a couple of months later, I might put them out. And then students have to come in and see where their new seat is. And they're going to sit down. Another thing with the answers, I like to break them up into lab groups. So I'll try, based on their answers, to figure out, maybe put, put them in groups and then they have them figure out, well, what question did they answer based on, you know, who's grouping with who, like the favorite color being blue over here, orange over there, etc. Next thing, class rules. You got to have class rules. If you already a veteran teacher and teaching another subject, you know that. Not only should you have the class rules, that you're going to have printed out on hard copy. You're going to hand them out to the kids. You're going to go over rule by rule with the students. Then you're going to have them take it home. They're going to sign it in pen. Mom or dad, parent or guardian, is also going to read it over and sign it. Dated, of course, bring it back to class. You collect those, and then you're going to give them a new sheet for them to keep in their notebooks. I usually do it also as a homework assignment, and it's a way for me to keep track to make sure that I got the rules from every single student back. And obviously, you want to give them a you know, copy of the contract. In those rules, besides behavior, I also put in how I grade for the class for the year. You know, what the categories are broken into, what percentages, and things like that. Do, are you going to have a midterm? Are you going to have a final? So that's very important as well. Now, you're going to have um, probably a double period for lab. Maybe um, with my school, we alternate single and double periods every other day. Some schools, it might not be as frequent, but certainly when you're going to have a double period or lab period days to start, you're going to want to go over your lab safety rules. Very, very important. Do not have the students do anything that's hands-on with any kind of lab equipment, even if you're working with water, without going through these rules first. What I like to use is the Flynn Scientific Contract. They actually have a contract for middle school. They have one for high school, and they even have one for college. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, again, 
read through every single rule with the students, have them sign it, parent or guardian signs it, you get it back and you give them a blank copy. Another thing I'm going to suggest, if you have never seen this before, the American Chemical Society back in 1991 put out a lab safety video that is still 100% relevant to a high school student working in the lab today. It's called Starting With Safety. You can just go to YouTube and put it in the search and it will come up. It's only about a half an hour, 35 minutes. I'll also put a, a link below in the description if you want to go right there to make sure you found the right one. It is awesome, highly suggested. I'd have the students maybe take notes while they're watching the video, but certainly every kid, even if a kid is absent, I literally have them come in for extra help and watch the safety video and go over the safety rules with them. One other suggestion here, give the students a quiz on safety rules. There is one on the Flynn website. It's the same link in the description. I typically use that because it's geared exactly to the safety rules. I will not let a student perform in the lab unless they're getting 95% or higher on their quiz. I'll have them take it over and over again until they again get 95 or better or 100%. So that's basically it for my first day or so. I'm going to just give you a quick idea that, that I thought about and I'm going to use with my students the first or second day of class this year. Put some poster paper up, maybe give them post-its, or I can even just give them markers. And what I was thinking is on each one of these papers, maybe to provide either an element or a compound formula, here's some examples, and have them walk around a ro the room and give me one thing they know when they look at a formula. For example, I didn't write it here, but like H2O. You know, probably a kid knows it's water. What else do they know about these chemical formulas? Usually if they're taking chemistry in high school, they've taken biology, maybe they've taken earth science, they've taken middle school science. So they should know about compounds and formulas, maybe atoms, molecules. And Personally, I just want to see. A lot of times students forget there's a disconnect between what a formula is and all the information behind it. So that's just one quick idea. It's cheap. You throw it up, you get them moving around and talking to one another. Another thing you could do is, is the exact same thing, but maybe do it with safety rules. Maybe put pictures of people working either safely or unsafely in a, in a lab setting and have the kids comment on it. Just something simple. Just a suggestion. Here's my final slide for the video. Make sure you're over preparing for every day. You don't want to end early and then have the kids getting up and waiting at the door. Over prepare, have more to give them than what will fit in that period and then you have stuff that can spill over to the next day. Relax, it's gonna be difficult, you got a lot going on. The first day of school means you've already gone through probably um, you know, a district-wide meeting faculty meeting, department meeting, all these meetings, all these people running around, a lot going on. You might have chemistry you're preparing for and maybe entirely other subjects, like maybe you have a bio class, maybe you have a different level chem class. Try to over prepare for each of those classes. So relax as best you can. When you're in the classroom and with, when you're with the kids, have fun. Please subscribe. Please provide comments. Hit the thumbs up, the, you know, the bell, that whole thing. Ask me questions. If you like this video and you would want to see more, give me suggestions and I will do the best that I can. It's going to be a great year. Take care.